Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. I am preparing for a winter skills class coming up in a couple of weeks out here at school. And with that, I'm getting some saws out and making sure that they are maintained well and ready for use. We're going to talk about different types of saws in that class and different types of blade applications for what you're doing in the woods as well, because blade selection is just as important as selecting a saw to begin with whether it's the type or the brand. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But what I thought we'd do is go through a couple different types of saws and brands of saws, talk about why I prefer some types over others, applications for some type versus others, and advantages and disadvantages of some types versus others, as well as the cost of these saws in comparison to each other. So if you guys stay with me, we'll get started. So the first thing we should probably discuss in this video is hand saws versus bow and buck saws, right? And a bow saw being a solid frame saw, both of these are called frame saws. The difference is a bow saw is one solid frame. A buck saw generally has a movable frame or a take apart frame like this wooden one or a movable frame, something like the Bob Dustridge saw where it folds over on itself and the blade comes completely out. That is considered a bucking saw. Something like this, compared to, again, this being a bow saw, all right? So why would I select a folding saw over a bow or buck saw? The main reason for carrying a larger saw of any kind, whether that be a large folding saw, like this Silky Big Boy, or something like this Spring Creek Manufacturing Buck Saw that has a 20 two inch blade or 21 inch blade on it. The reason for that is you're cutting larger diameter wood or you're gonna have to cut a lot of wood and you don't know exactly what size it's going to be. If you are crafting, if you're doing bush crafting or you're cutting up smaller pieces of wood, you're only limbing and things like that, sawing or cutting limbs off from deadfall and things of that nature, then you can get away easily enough with a folding saw, no question about it. If you're doing crafting type work, then you're going to prefer a folding saw probably because you can manipulate it easier, make stop cuts and things like that. But the tooth pattern of that saw is going to be important. So let's talk about folding saws real quick first. So one of the most popular folding saws for bushcraft is the Baco Laplander. And the Baco Laplander is a fine saw when it comes to bushcraft work. If you've got to cut firewood with this thing, you're going to be there for a while. If you just need to make stop cuts, you need to make shelves for cutting notches, cutting small limbs for traps and things like that. This saw is fine and dandy. It has a blade that cuts both directions, which is advantageous to a new saw user, whereas the silky saw is a pull cut saw. So this one has distinct advantages there. It does have a very good flexible blade on it. I've never broken a blade from one of these saws. Bacos have never ever broke on me. I have broken silky saws, I'll be the first to admit it, but it's always been my fault when they broke, not the fault of the saw, because I got in a hurry pushing the blade back through a thin kerf, bent the blade, and snapped the blade, okay? I've done the same thing with these Bacos and bent them and had to hammer them back. The disadvantage really to the, of the Baco over something like a silky saw, and this is a silky gomboy, for example, which is a very similar size saw to the Baco Laplander. The biggest advantage of the Silky Saw is that you can buy multiple blade profiles for these saws, no matter what size saw it is. So you can buy different tooth patterns per inch. So you can purchase a more aggressive tooth pattern for cutting things like green wood if you're crafting. But if you're cutting dry wood, you can stay with a tooth pattern that has more teeth per inch, but maybe slightly more aggressive in nature than this saw is. Or you can buy a very, very fine tooth blade for this, and they're easy enough to change in and out, which is what I like about them as well, because you can use one blade to change to another. You can have a very, very fine blade for this thing to do fine woodworking around camp. So there are some advantages there. The disadvantage there is cost. Now, the other advantage to something like a folding saw may be the room it takes up within your kit and the amount of tools you want to carry into whatever situation you're going. 
you can go with a bigger saw like the big boy and still have a folding saw and you can cut fairly large timbers with that easy enough four or five inches is no problem for a big boy all day long you can cut green wood or dry wood with it depending on the blade you get but you do have the disadvantage of the blade not being connected on both ends so it does tend to do this and if you're not careful on the push stroke and you hang it up in the kerf and you bend it you can break the blade and that's one of the big advantages to a bow saw or frame saw over any folding saw is that the blade is rigid on both ends because it is anchored on both ends of the saw so it cannot flex like a folding saw can so there's an advantage there that you have to understand as well now let's get away from the folding saws for a minute because really this is a matter of these are the only two choices in my mind as far as brands go Baco or Silky Saw really anything else is in my honest opinion a waste of money but either one of these will do fine when you're talking about a saw like this you're talking about a starting price of anywhere from 30 to probably 35 40 dollars a saw like this you're talking about a starting price of 40 dollars going up to around 50 or 60 depending on where you buy it and then saws like this costing quite a bit more so if they're cost prohibitive for you you know the baco is probably your best bet if it's not cost prohibitive for you i would go with the gomboy personal opinion Okay, so as we're talking about frame saws, we want to talk about a couple different type frames first to understand that. You have a solid frame bow saw, which is one solid piece of metal. We talked about that a few minutes ago. And then you have, for lack of a better word, I'm going to call it a Sven saw, although this one is an actual Sven saw. This one is a different brand. That is at an angle and not a straight bar. These saws have huge disadvantages, in my opinion. I talked about this in my book, Bushcraft 101. The disadvantage to this is the limiting factor of a saw like this without turning or manipulating the wood is the distance between the top of the blade and the upper bar. So as you can see, that distance gets reduced as you go down the blade. So if you have a log laying in here and you're cutting down through that log, as you stroke that blade, you lose stroke as you get deeper in the log because now you're hitting here, now all of a sudden you're hitting here, now all of a sudden you're hitting here, and the stroke of that blade or how much you can cut at one time, how far you can pull that saw, becomes greatly limited with this type of saw. Now, if you're using this for smaller limbs and things like that, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But again, a folding saw will do all of that for you. So I think that kind of takes the Sven saw out of the current favor, in my opinion, of a saw that I would even carry. I have a couple of these for examples, but I never carry this type of saw, okay? Now, let's talk about folding frame saws, and we'll start with wooden saws, all right? These wooden saws basically are just one crossbar and two uprights. Generally speaking, they're made so that they have a windlass on them that you wind up. Lots of companies are making these now. You take the windlass off, and you fold it and it removes the crossbar from the center. And most of them will fold so that the blade folds into a slot. Sometimes you have to kind of manipulate the kerf to get it in there. Just like that and like this. So that you have that saw foldable into a flat package to be able to carry it with you. This is a very traditional saw. If you buy a good manufactured one, they're very, very stable. Obviously, the windlass is what caused that stability with the lever and fulcrum of that crossbar on those uprights. Again, the problem that you come into with this type saw, let's put this back together real quick. So you just unfold these legs. You would place the crossbar in the center, just like this. Take your windlass and attach it into the slots just like this, and then begin to turn the windlass to apply tension at the lever and fulcrum point of the uprights, giving you the needed tension to give you stability in the blade. So the advantage of something like this is it's traditional. It takes down. It's very cool looking. You can put measurement marks on it, things like that to make it multifunctional. Lots of things you can do with the saw. Disadvantage. Again, distance from here to here dictates the log you're going to cut without manipulating the piece of wood itself. If you have a stationary log or something that's difficult to move that you're trying to cut 
and it's larger in diameter than this saw, then you've got a problem because you're not gonna be able to get to it without moving it. So this, again, dictates what you can cut. Now you can cut probably a five inch log with this if you needed to, which is plenty big enough to do anything bush crafting, any kind of a shelter framing you wanna build, you could build with this. The advantage of a buck saw, in my opinion, over something like a folding saw is, number one, the stability of the blade, and number two, the length of stroke that you have keeping that blade stable and understanding that you're not going to twist this in any way, shape, or form, even if you get in a hurry with it. So you have advantages there as far as what you can do in the woods. These things are fast. When it comes to, if you get the right blade in here and you select the right blade for the location that you live in and the wood you're going to be working with, these things are super fast cutters and they'll get the job done, no question about it. For a camp environment where I want to stack firewood for the night, I'm going to carry one of these nine times out of 10 if I have the room and I can afford the weight, okay? Not necessarily a wooden one, but a H-frame type saw. Now, the next type saw I want to talk to you about, which is a very popular at one point in time, is the Bob Dustery Quick Saw. And the Bob Dustery Quick Saw has recently been redone by Spring Creek Manufacturing, so the saws look almost identical when you put them side by side. The difference is the Bob Dustery saw has a wooden handle. The Spring Creek has an ABS handle. Again, advantages and disadvantages to both. The advantage of the ABS is that it will not swell if it gets wet. The disadvantage to the ABS is it's slicker in your hand than the actual wood is most of the time. And the way these saws work is they just fold into the frame like this. You unfold it, pull it out. It drops out of the slots that are built into the frame. The frame folds over on itself just like this. And you then insert the blade into the square tube, folding the handle over and there's a nut right here on the top that sits inside and you close it down on top of it so it doesn't fall out, just like that. And then you can carry this saw in this configuration. A Little bit of difference here between this as far as length goes and something like a Silky Big Boy, but it's not that dramatic and the weight is less. The weight of these aluminum saws is very, very nice in your kit, okay? This saw I've had for a long time. I have it actually in a Duluth uh, saw cover here. I'm very fond of that saw. The problem with, this, with that type saw right now, or with that brand of saw, is they're expensive, okay? This saw is exactly the same, other than the plastic handle. For the most part, it does exactly the same thing. It pops out, the handle folds over, the frame folds up, and it goes inside. Now you can buy all of these buck saws in different frame sizes. So if you prefer a longer blade, like a 30 inch blade, 24 inch blade, you can buy them. This is a 21 inch. The Bob Duster I have is a 21 inch, but you can get them in different sizes up to 30 inches. And there's advantage to that. The disadvantage between, the disadvantage I would say of the Bob Duster over the Spring Creek is price, okay? The, and availability really. A lot of times the Bob Duster saws are hard to get. There's a few on Amazon right now, but they're like $120. Whereas the Spring Creek Manufacturing Saw, also made in the USA, also made in the USA, is about 55 bucks. So it's about half the price of a Bob Duster. And the availability is much greater because they're currently manufactured in Duluth, Minnesota at, at Spring Creek Manufacturing. So they make lots of them, okay? So the availability is there, the price point's there. Same, almost exact design of the saw. One difference is wood handle versus plastic handle, both made in America, okay? Now, the Agawa Canyon, and this one is the Boreal 15. These come in 15, 21, 24, 30. You can buy all the sizes in this saw as well. I'm just showing you a small one as an example. This saw is a very, very robust saw. It's a little heavier than the aluminum saws because it's made of steel. It has an ABS handle on it, and the mechanism is a little different, but the saw is every bit as stable, if not more, than the other saws. You're going to turn the saw up, fold this handle down. You have a locking device that comes up out of the saw here, out of the frame, like this, that folds down and the frame folds again this way, just like the other saws. 
except this comes in this direction and locks in a slot here, pulling that blade into a slot on the saw. So you basically have a locking device here on the saw that locks here and then clamps in. And you heard that thing pop. That thing is rock solid tight, okay? Again, this is the 15 inch. You can get it all the way up to 30 inch. The advantage to these type saws, in my mind, over something like this is the height of this bar, all right? You don't have a center bar here to work with, so you don't have anything restricting the cut. What you have is this height is restricting your cut. Again, this is a 15 inch saw. This is more like a little pack saw, okay? If this saw was this long and the bar was this high, you could cut logs this big around versus this big around, okay? Depending on the saw, that distance can be more dramatic. We'll talk about that in just a minute, okay? But that's the advantage over these frame type saws in one aspect over the H style folding saws, like the more traditional H style that you have a crossbar in is elimination of that crossbar allows you to get, allows you to cut, I should say, larger diameter log without manipulating the material, all right? So that is the Agawa Canyon. So really, you've got those three brands are pretty good as far as a folding saw goes. The Agawa Canyon, again, price point, very, very close to industrial. You're talking about for the same size saw, probably over a hundred bucks or at a hundred bucks, okay? But again, very stable, very well built, almost bulletproof in my opinion because it's made of steel, not aluminum, but it is a little heavier than the aluminum saws are as well. Now, the last saw I want to talk to you about today before we go into talking about blades and having a blade discussion is I want to talk to you about the Browningham Expedition Saw. And this saw is made from titanium. All right. So if you're the ultralight guy, this is the saw for you. Now, the difference between the weight of this saw, and this is a 24 inch saw, the difference between the weight of this saw and something like the Agawa Canyon is pretty dramatic. Even though this is aluminum with a plastic handle, the weight difference in the titanium is dramatic, okay? This thing weighs literally nothing at all. It is very, very lightweight. I'm sure you can find the specs on his website or his Instagram page. Again, this is a titanium saw. Look at the distance you have from here to here in this 24-inch saw. You could easily cut an eight, nine-inch log with this if you needed to. So depending on what you're doing in the woods, you can cut a much bigger piece of material with this saw and it weighs next to nothing. It also folds up. The way this one works is it's held under pressure. So you push down against the saw. It's got a plate built into it here to put your foot on. You push down on the saw and I don't know if I can do it on the table or not. I can try. I think I can. There we go. Okay. So you push down on the frame and that flexes this tube and allows that blade to lock in on two locking devices on the ends. But it folds up to this. For packing and it comes with a nice Cordura case here that you can put that dude in in your kit. Now again, this is the 24 inch model of this saw and you can buy it in also 21, I believe, and possibly 30. So depending on the size, it's gonna depend on the cost. However, this saw is much more expensive because it's made of titanium than the other saws that we've talked about. So the advantage to this is weight. The disadvantage, price. And it's always that way with titanium, no matter what it is. It's always gonna cost more and you're gonna pay for the fact that it doesn't weigh anything. So if you are that guy that's looking for the ultra light stuff, this is it. For me, I have to tell you after having this saw and using it a few times now, that not only is the weight of this saw very advantageous, I really like the design of this saw and I really like the way it cuts. So we're gonna segue into our next discussion. I'm gonna tell you that when I got this saw, the very first thing I did was change the blade, all right? It came with a Baco Greenwood blade. Baco blades are fantastic blades. There's nothing wrong with the brand of the blade. However, I wanted a dry wood blade 
So I put a dry wood blade on it. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the difference real quick on camera between a dry wood and a green wood blade. And then we're going to go discuss it on the whiteboard to give you a little bit better visual of what I'm talking about and why they're made that way. But if you look at these two blades, you can see that they're completely different tooth patterns, all right? This is a dry wood blade, this is a green wood blade. For me, again, common sense dictates, if I'm cutting firewood, I'm gonna be cutting dead wood if possible, not green wood. For me, a dry wood blade cuts much faster. It doesn't jump around as much as a green wood blade. The advantage of a green wood blade is it gives you a much wider kerf and removes material easier from the kerf when you're cutting. So you have to kind of look at that from both directions and decide for yourself what you choose. For me, I like more teeth per inch without rakers and gullets so that I can cut hardwoods that I find out here in Ohio like maple, cherry, hickory, those things that I find fallen dead are big advantages with the dry wood blade. The disadvantages you would come into with a dry wood blade in eastern woodlands would be if you were cutting dead pine that had very much resin in it. It's going to gum up that blade pretty fast compared to a greenwood blade. We'll talk about why that is in just a minute. Okay, let's talk about saw blades for a minute. Now, we talked about the fact that we could carry multiple blades with the folding saw. We talked about the silky. And I carry multiple blades for my gomboy in a black pouch. I've shown that on videos before for craft work and things like that. My buck saws also are the same. I have multiple blades for them. And it's very easy to carry multiple blades for a buck saw because they're flat, they don't weigh anything, and they'll slide right into the same case that you have your buck saw in to begin with. So most of the time I have a greenwood blade, I have a drywood blade, and I have a bone cutting blade. So that if I'm butchering a deer or something like that, I need to cut ribs or something like that, I can do it with a bone saw blade and slap it right into my buck saw. So there's a big advantage there when it comes to a base camp type saw having a buck saw over a folding saw. That's something else to bear in mind. Now, let's talk about the difference, really. We won't talk about bone saw blades because they're very much like a hacksaw blade. Let's go back to wood cutting for a minute. And let's talk about the difference between a dry wood blade and a green wood blade. And the reason I like the dry wood blade, again, is because I think they cut faster and smoother in dry hardwoods. Now, if you're cutting a resinous wood, which I realize pine is a hardwood, but it's also a softer hardwood. It has a lot of resin in it. And that resin will tend to gum the teeth up on a dry wood blade. So I prefer a green wood blade for something like pine. However, I'm gonna cut more of the other stuff most of the time than I am pine. So I prefer a dry wood blade in my saw with a green wood blade in my bag. Let's talk about the difference. A dry wood blade is nothing but teeth per inch. All right, it's the same as any other saw for the most part. It just looks like this. It's a row of teeth all the way down the blade. So many teeth per inch. The more teeth you have per inch, the finer the cut's going to be and the narrower the kerf generally is. Whereas if you go with something like a Sydney Rancher style blade, it's gonna have less teeth per inch. And it's going to be a rougher cut but it's still going to be better in hard wood. And I like the Sydney Rancher blades really well. Those are a little bit hard to get in the U.S., but they come with, you can buy them with the Agawa Canyon saws. And I've got one on one of my bow saws, on my, one of my other bow saws as well. I have a Sydney Rancher blade in the bag. But either a dry wood Baco blade, and I'll, this is a Baco, just so we know what brand we're looking at here, right? You can go on Amazon and get that. Or you can go on our website and get it, selfrelianceoutfitters.com. And the Sydney Rancher blade, and I think you can also get that Sydney Rancher blade on our website as well because we sell a Gala Canyon saws. All right, that's the dry wood blade. Now let's talk about the green wood blade and why it's different and what it does, what its design intent is. You know, I'm big on design intent. What you generally have is you have what's called rakers and gullets on a green wood blade. So you'll have a row of usually three teeth, okay? And then you'll have what's called a gullet here. And then you'll have something that looks like this on both sides. So you'll have a gullet and then you'll have a raker tooth here and a gullet. And then it will go right back into three teeth again. 
Oops, excuse me. Then it'll go right back into three teeth again. And then another gullet with a raker tooth. Gullet, tooth, 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 okay? So what happens with this blade is these teeth here are exactly like these teeth. And they're bent to set the saw or determine the kerf width in the saw. So you'll have one tooth this way, one tooth this way. Every other one will be bent, okay, in the opposite direction. That's called the set of the saw, and it's what makes the kerf or that cutting groove in the saw. So you have the same thing in a greenwood blade with three teeth, but then you also have what's called a gullet, and that gullet's designed to grab those larger shavings or larger cuttings of green or resinous wood and collect them into the gullet. And then you have what's called a raker tooth here that is straight. So it's straight where the other teeth are like this. That raker tooth is straight. And that raker tooth that's usually doubled up like this, it's got two little teeth on it, is what pulls that material from the kerf and dumps it out on the ground so that you can still cut smooth and you don't get gummed up. And that's what happens when you cut resinous wood with a dry wood blade, you get that gumming or you get it stuck in there. It doesn't cut near as well as something like a greenwood blade wood that's designed to make a wider kerf and pull material out of the kerf every time the saw goes back and forth, material is getting dumped, 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 dumped out of the kerf because it's being collected in the gullets and raked out of the kerf by the set of the saw, okay? I hope that didn't confuse you. It's pretty simple. Advantages to the greenwood blade, obviously you're on resinous wood or greenwood where you're gonna have larger fibers being cut that are going to clog up the kerf. The advantages to a dry wood blade is they're going to cut much smoother and generally faster on a dry piece of wood and give you a smoother cut without jumping around so much, especially at the beginning of the cut as those larger raker and gullet style blades do for green wood. Again, easy enough to carry both of these types of blades in your kit, whether it's a Sydney Rancher or a Baco, as well as a greenwood blade. And if you're a hunter and you're doing some kind of a deer camp scenario, you can throw a bone blade in there as well, keep it in your saw case, you're never gonna know the difference because the weight is basically inconsequential, all right? So that's the difference in saw blades and selecting the right blade. And again, that's why I say blade selection is every bit as important as the saw itself. You can have the best saw frame on the planet and if you've got the wrong blade for the wood you're cutting, it's going to be more difficult or it's not going to be as pleasurable or it's not going to be as easy. And that's the key to selecting the right blade. But the proper selection is to have different types of blades with your saw so that you can adapt to the environment, situation, or type of timber that you're cutting into. All right, folks, listen, I appreciate you joining me out today at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom for a discussion on saws. Fairly lengthy discussion, but I think some of these are warranted on my channel. And I'll be going over this same discussion, very similar to this discussion at the Winter Skills class with some demo work on the side as well with the different types of saws, letting people try different things to understand how they work best for them. Some of these saws are available on our website. Some of these blades are available on our website. Agawa Canyon, Spring Creek, Baco, Silky Saw, all of those are available on our website. You can go there and purchase blades and saw frames, hand saws, that type of stuff, okay? Selfrelianceoutfitters.com. Listen, I appreciate your views and I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. Follow our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.